everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be continuing on with that stripy peppermint bustle project that I've been working on with my last two sewing vlogs. And we are ready now to move on to the bodice. Now the base of this bodice is going to be pretty basic. It's going to be your standard Victorian bustle era bodice. The exterior of it, however, we are definitely going to have to be playing with a lot of the stripes here because there are a lot of funky stripe things going on. I think what's causing the funky stripes is a section that is gathered or maybe pleated that goes kind of over the bust and that's really playing with that stripe direction. And then over here on the side panel, we're going to have a section that's kind of on the bias. So we're getting bias type stripes and the sleeve also is going to be on the bias. So it's definitely going to be very interesting to play with. The bodice shape itself, I believe, is one of those kinds that kind of has the false center bit here so that we can get kind of one of those ascot looks going on in the center. But judging from the fashion plate, it kind of comes together right under the bust and this would close right up the center down in the front, the center front. So yesterday I spent some time puzzling over what does the back of this bodice look like? Because when you look at this plate again, you have kind of just a bodice that just sort of ends there, and then you have the tails of the bustle showing. Now, there's two possibilities for a bustle bodice like this. The first possibility is I did this completely wrong and this part of the over skirt is actually part of the bodice. So it's kind of cut in long tails, if you will, hanging from the bodice all in one piece. So that's one possibility that I'm obviously not going to do because I've already done the over skirt. The second possibility is that it's just a very short V in the back so that it comes to a nice little short point just past the natural waist so that it kind of sits on top of the bodice level here and just makes that nice little point right up there at the top, not blocking any of the draping of the bustle itself. So that is the idea that I am going to go for here. Now, I have kind of a go-to bodice pattern that if you've been around my channel before when I've been working on bustle era or really any Victorian type things, you've probably heard me talk about. I created this pattern as part of a class several years ago that I took from the Fifth Avenue Theater on draping Victorian bodices, and it was so, so useful. I have literally been using this bodice pattern for I think all of my Victorian bodices since then. So yeah, that was a really, really good class. So basically I just take this same bodice shape and then I alter it to get whatever I need. So usually that means altering the neckline, altering the waist, the way that it flares out or doesn't flare out into like tails or whatever in the back and altering sleeve length, sometimes even sleeve shape, but that's basically it. I mean, I believe it's a, a two dart front bodice and then has that kind of standard Victorian fiddle back, if you will, in the back. So it's pretty normal and it's pretty versatile. And so with this bodice, I'm going to be making up a mock-up first of that standard bodice pattern and then I'm going to figure out how to do the gathered bits in the front since that will probably be the only really different piece will be this whole like center front area but even that will be built on top of the fitted lining layer which would be like the mock-up, a standard bodice pattern. So I'm going to kind of cheat maybe a little bit to begin with because if you watched my 2020 wrap up I mentioned that I had a couple of UFO bodices that I just left in their mock-up stage and then never did anything with and one of them is an evening bodice so it's not quite as useful and the other one is a bodice that is really intended to have a collar because it's a jacket bodice but I think that it's going to be okay for me to actually sew up that mock-up and try it on and see what needs to change because I know that the bottom where the point is, both in the front and the back, I know that that will need to change and the neckline will need to change. But it will allow me to make those changes on the pieces and then hopefully get a better idea of what the next 
version needs to be. So that is what I have here. I have that mock-up already cut out and I am just going to sew this together, not finishing any seams or anything, obviously, because it is a mock-up. This is cotton twill, by the way. And I'm going to sew this together and try it on and see what needs to be changed. So the one really major difference that I know that I have to deal with right away on this pattern from the writing habit jacket is the center back. And that is because this center back is cut quite long and is done with pleats here or a box pleat here rather. And that is not at all what the one that I'm making now is going to be. So I've drawn in this little line here, this pink line, that's going to be my stitch line going out to the point of the tail. And it will probably curve in like that to the side seam. I'm not positive, so I'm not going to draw that in yet until I put the side seam with it. But that seam right here I am going to do because I know that this is way off. I'm hoping that this will be going out far enough that it can really get that 80s protrusion, if you will, of the bustle. So hopefully that will work and hopefully the rest of this won't get in the way as I'm trying to fit this sort of shape. So we'll give it a try. So I was going to sew, but then this happened. And so now apparently I can't sew because there's someone very much more important than this sewing machine. She's back. <laughs> well, this is life now. Dora did allow me to get back to sewing, so I was able to sew together the mock-up, and it is now fully assembled. I haven't pressed the seams. I might. I might not. I won't be able to try this on until tomorrow because it is unfortunately time to go to bed. And the one other thing that I'm a little bit, like, concerned about how it's going to work as far as sitting is that this pattern is made with this, like, collar bit on here and I don't want that for the bodice that I'm actually making. <laughs> that was an experiment for this. So I'm actually thinking that what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to do the collar, try this on as the mock-up for the Daniel Deronda jacket, though I did do the back the way that I want it, so I don't know, maybe I'll do the back there. Um, do the tweaks and markings that I need to on that, and then kind of like fold the collar out of the way and see if I can use the fronts as is for this mock-up for the peppermint bustle. And if I can't, then I guess I will cut new fronts and do the fronts based on my standard block pattern and just cut new ones. Because I, like, I should have just probably done that anyway, but I didn't because this was here. So, and I do need to try on this mock-up because ideally this is going to be one of my next projects, which you would have seen if you have seen my 2021 goals video and I even mentioned in that video not to go on a tangent but I mentioned in that video that I didn't think that the fabric that I had was right and I've decided it's true it's totally not right but fabric.com you may already know this story a few weeks ago a couple weeks ago fabric.com had these bolts of wool fabric that were on sale for a super, super good price. And so naturally the entire costuming community ordered them and everyone was sent yards of fabric instead of the bolts that they ordered. Yeah. So that said, fabric.com has promised to send me my bolts as soon as they get their next shipment in. So in a couple weeks, I will hopefully be getting the replacement bolts because one of the fabrics that I ordered is the perfect fabric that I need for Daniel Deronda. So please keep your fingers crossed for me. And I'm curious if you were part of the fabric.com fiasco of those wool bolts, please comment below and let me know because I know of a whole bunch of people already, like probably 30 to 40 people between fellow costumers, some friends, and the History Bounding group on Facebook, but I want to know who else was involved because I feel like this affected a lot of people. Anyway, tangent aside, I will be trying this on tomorrow and we will see how it goes. So as it turns out, I don't think that this is going to work for this mock-up at all. I forgot that the front is cut in this sort of way as well and then the collar is just a whole bunch of funky which like I don't think it's right for this mock-up either that was my main thing with this mock-up is trying to get the collar right and then the back even though I did it in the little like 
point here. It's got these huge tails because it's a riding habit jacket. So yeah, I that's not gonna work. I'm going to have to actually recut a fresh mock-up based on the same pattern, the same base pattern as in the two darts and the shaping and everything, but minus the collar with a one single front point with the small point in the back and all of that sort of thing. And hopefully these animals will help me. But that will be what I'm doing today. So I guess I'm not trying on this bodice after all. Once I have the new bodice mocked up, I might just try on both of these bodices though. So I want to talk to you for a moment about how good it is to have kind of like a base pattern for things because this is the base pattern that I'm going back to to cut out the mock-up and you'll notice that there are lines all over this for various things and many of them are marked with names such as like the fairy godmother or velvet or 1890s ball gown, 1880s plaid, etc. because of all of the different things that I've cut out of these patterns and the different tweaks that have been made. So this is all just like a sturdy muslin. It's the kind of muslin that like professional shops use for their muslins. And so I just have this from that original drape, which wasn't even, I should say, it was not made to fit me. It was made to fit a dress form. So that's why from even these original lines, which are these pencil lines, there are some tweaks, like for example, half an inch out that way, or sometimes like half an inch down that way. And some of the tweaks I find are the same no matter what pattern I'm working on. For example, like this curve out five eighths inch. So a lot of them, they're kind of the same each time. But then we get, especially when we look at the necklines, we get really like a different neckline for every dress that I've done practically. So there's fairy godmother, velvet, 1890s ball gown. To be honest, I forget what the orange one was, but I probably have it marked up. Ah, orange was plaid 1880s. So we have all of the different things that I've done before for past projects. And then this is that base kind of like at the base of the neckline type neckline. So what I'm going to be doing for this just to do the base, I am going to be doing this top neckline and I'm going to be creating a point down at the center front. So I kind of have to look at some of the past bodices that I've done and figure out which one is the closest to what I'm going for and go with that point or maybe something similar. Just for example, I'm pretty sure that this green one is the Daniel Deronda one. I hope I have it labeled. It might be on a different pattern piece, but I'm pretty sure that's what that was. And these weird black lines were when I turned this into a princess seamed bodice to get Elsa. So I have done all sorts of crazy things to this. The other big difference is going to be the back tails because this one is meant for like a large pleated back, kind of like that Daniel Deronda bodice. And so I'm going to be curving this out into a fairly sharp point. I think I've actually used that for something before because there's thread markings there. And so I'm not sure what that was. That could have even been the original bodice. Uh, one of the tests of it, but that's probably the line that I'm kind of going to be following for the back point. So it's just a matter of tweaking it, but the base bodice stays the same. So that's the wonderful thing about having a pattern like this in your arsenal. Even if you're starting with like a truly Victorian pattern or something similar, heck, Butterick simplicity type pattern, if you find that it fits you well, it can become your base pattern and you can start just doing little tweaks and using it for everything. So I do recommend putting it on something sturdy like this. Like this is a muslin that doesn't really stretch even, so it's really quite handy. And then you can just take it out and use it for anything. You can even sew together these pattern pieces and do a test if you want. Now this is only half of the bodice. I think I do have the other half somewhere, but I am not going to just sew them together. I am going to cut it out of twill because I use twill for my flat lining and I am at least fairly confident that I can get this close enough based on the fact that I've used this a million times that I will go ahead and just cut out the lining of twill. So that's what I do generally when I'm using this as a starting point. 
So one of the things that I will do when I'm contemplating what line kind of to go with is that I will look at old pictures of costumes that I've made with this pattern. For example, this stripey bustle, which I know bears a striking resemblance to that, but it's actually based on a completely different dress. And I will use this to kind of determine, okay, well, that was, you know, a tail in the back, but it's not exactly what I'm going for here. I want mine to be more pointed. Now, what that probably means is a little bit shorter on the side, but keeping the back length probably fairly close to that, but less full. So I believe, if I remember correctly, that this one is the blue. It's one of the earliest bodices that I've done with this pattern, and I'm fairly certain that it was the blue lines on here. So I think to start out with, I'm going to pretty much use the blue. I do want to make this kind of a more defined point. I know it looks very defined here, but it's not quite. So I think that's going to involve taking this up just a little bit. I don't want to go too high because, you know, I can always take it up more, but I can't add more without cutting a new piece. And I think I might even take it out just a little bit too, because I want that point to really just like lay on the shelf of the bustle. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now, unfortunately, the neckline on this dress is totally not at all what I'm going for there. Um, it's much higher. And actually, I didn't even mark that neckline on this pattern. So not much use anyway. So again, I'm just going to go for this neckline here. I got a little chip out of it, I think. So I'm going to just round that out a bit and also do the highest neckline on the back of the bodice up here, which this one I've used for the 1880s plaid one, which was fairly high in the back, but I don't think it had a standing collar. So I'm just going to go all the way up to the back to give myself some seam allowance there. But otherwise, uh, those blue lines are what I'm going to kind of follow in the back. All right, so I have assembled the new bodice mock-up, and I think it is really, really close. I am going to be having this as a front closure, but I think because I'm not using buttons as my front closure, I think I actually have excess here. I have pinned it so that obviously the seams are on the outside because that way I can alter the seams easier. And other than the center front, the only spot that I'm noticing that needs really any alteration on a seam, I believe, is the center back. It is large at the waist. I have it pinned currently, but I want to put this bodice on with the outsides in over the bustle, because, especially because for the center back, right at the curve of the back, I need to know how that's going to sit over the bustle, how it's going to like flare out and everything. But I am liking for sure the shape of this V. It's a nice deep point, maybe even too deep. And I think we're a little long over the sides, but it's close. So what I'm going to do before I put it on over that is I'm going to press all the seams, which I haven't done yet. And I'm also going to fold up the seam allowance on the bottom. And I mean, ideally I would do it on the neckline and the arm size as well, but it's just really, really hard to fold when it's on a curved area, so I'm probably not going to do that. That said, something that I have already done is I've drawn a little mark here where the hinge of my shoulder is, because that ideally should be the shoulder seam. Shoulders fit pretty like on the shoulder in this era, and so this should pretty much be the shoulder seam. I'll have to double check before I cut all the excess off, but probably the seam allowance should be about where my finger is right here and not out here. I mean, this does have my chemise under here as well, but yeah, you can see it's way too far and it's sitting way too far even as it goes under the arm's eye as well. And I don't think all of that is going to go away with the seam allowance, but it's really hard to tell for me always. So I do tend to leave that a little bit longer and then deal with that once I'm setting the sleeve and cut some of that excess off then because then it's easier to tell. I have mentioned this on my channel before, but I don't do sleeve mock-ups when I do bodice mock-ups. I wait until the bodice is basically done and then I move on to sleeves because it's just easier for me to do one piece of the puzzle at a time. But this bodice is working pretty well. You can see that also that like the seam allowance like here at the closure, it's totally different. It's way way more excess here than there is like at the bust. So I made this just a flat front, which I knew wasn't going to be 
what it was because I never can have a straight seam in the front. It always needs to be curved. So I do have to mess with that and figure it out. But the other part of it is that I also need to figure out what the underlayer wants to look like when it has that sort of ascot type look in the front. I have to figure out where that closure needs to be, whether I want like a placket underneath or what. So that's more solving of things. And for now I was going to do it center front closure and then like add a placket or whatever as I need to. So overall I think we are pretty close. I'm going to do all of that pressing bit, put that on with it, and then see what it looks like then. All right, I have the bodice on now over the skirts. I have pressed up this, the hem here and I've pressed all of the seams and then pinned the center front back. And as I was pinning, I was getting a little nervous because I got down to about here and then the bottom here doesn't actually meet when I'm wearing all of the skirts and everything. But then I looked in the mirror and I realized that this point is like ridiculously low. Like I don't even know what I was thinking with having the point this low. So it's going to come up actually to here. But I've drawn in a pink line which is going to be my new cut line or not cut line actually. It's going to be my new like where I want the bodice to be. So it'll be cut about three eighths inches past there because it's just going to be bound. And that line goes around here and then it's kind of hard to draw it in the back so I did draw it a little but uh, I might have to fix that once I take this bodice off. And then the other thing that I'm noticing in the back is that yes it's still a little bit too big right in the very bottom of the center back. Not huge but it is a little bit big. Where it's actually big is right over here over the top of the corset. Now normally I do poof out a little bit just myself over the top of the corset. I do get a little bit of that like muffin top going on but the bodice is actually going way more poofy than I am. So I've done some markings on here that were literally just like me drawing a pen line here and like here and everything in between that is going to have to be taken out just a little bit. I may also have to take it out a little bit on the side back seams. We'll see how much is going to be a center back thing versus a side back thing. But overall it's pretty close. I am going to mark this line here because as I mentioned before it's totally not straight. It's definitely very curvy. But the good thing is that this is a hook and eye closure type bodice so I don't need to worry about button plackets going on. And again, this is like that under structure layer where I still have to figure out how with the over part I'm going to have like the sort of hidden closure where I'm going to have like the poofy ascot look to about here-ish I think is going to be that poofy center part and then it's going to meet edge to edge in the center the rest of the way down. And of course, once I do get all of this perfected, then I have to play with stripe placement. So that's going to make it even more difficult. So I'm going to make all of these tweaks to the bottom and to the back. Try it on again. Oh, the other thing that I did is that I already did actually cut off the um, arm's eye here where it was too far out. I think, oh right, I marked on the inside so you can't actually see where I marked it. But I went a little bit farther out than just like a half inch where I marked it and I'm liking where this is hitting a lot. So I'm just going to keep this as is. I think that was pretty much the exact perfect change that I wanted. So yeah, I've got some stuff to play around with and then I will try this back on again. All right, so the bodice is back on. I chopped off that excess down at the waist and I have folded it back up other than at the front because it's kind of funky to pin right there. Um, but I folded the rest of it back up so that it is where it should be hitting. And I really am liking this line right here. I think it's just what I want. The one other thing that I did do is that the back point was still feeling really just a lot of like, it was kind of rippling because there was just too much there. And so I have pinned out some of the tail. I don't think you can probably see it even on the camera but I've pinned out some of the width of the tail in the center back. So that will taper a little bit more or be a little bit narrower. So I will have to sew that into place, but that's done. And then I also did sew out the bit of the center back where it was poofing. It is still poofing, 
a little bit but I think I'm gonna wait on that because I do mine with a flat lining construction and so I can't always do small alterations like that once it's together. One of the things that I'm still trying to debate about because obviously the center of back or the back of the bodice is not shown in the fashion plate so I'm trying to decide if I want to do that oh so beautiful thing of the chevrons in the center bag because that is so visually pleasing or if I want to not give myself an ultimate headache and just do it straight up and down, which is boring, but it is easier. So that's something I'm going to be looking at when I go to lay out my pieces everywhere. And I am going to cut off all of this excess so that it's just a half inch so that I can do plackets for the hooks and eyes. But yeah, otherwise I'm super happy with the fit of this bodice. I think this was a fairly simple mock-up process and I'm ready to start doing a layout of figuring out stripes. So wish me luck. It is Wednesday currently. I'll probably start to do that tonight because it's only six o'clock. So yeah, I just gotta rip this apart. Well, I'll cut the excess off, rip this apart and Go for it. So what I realized that I forgot to do while I was wearing it, you know, and my corset and all that sort of stuff, which I've already taken off, is that I forgot to mark where this like side front panel ends and where the Brewster gathered part begins. So that is what I'm trying to figure out now, because I think it's kind of like in this general region like somewhere over here over the bust so what I'm going to wind up doing with the exterior fabric is I'm going to be cutting a front piece that's not actually all of the front piece it's going to be a partial front piece that goes to probably about where this dart is is my guess and then I'll have the ruched bit which the ruched bit will come together and meet in the center here but it will have the sort of ascotty type thing in the top so I do have to figure that out. I'm going to try and make sure that I just cut excess because if I have to layer on top, then fine. Or if I have to cut off excess, then fine. But I want to at least get to that point. So it's not going to be cut like all the way to the center, but I'm going to cut it somewhere over past this dart so that I know that I have enough of it. All right, so now that I figured that out, I'm going to draw on kind of a dotted line on the bodice and then I'm going to take this bodice apart and start cutting out on the stripey part. So before I go and rip everything apart, I did want to show you where that line was. This is where I'm going to be cutting the side front piece to with its little bias stripes and I think it's honestly way far past for the most part where it needs to go because again I think that it's more in line with like this up to here but I want that excess in fact I might even go a half inch past this because I just would rather have it be too much than too little so the last thing that I do once I have my interlining pattern type thing going on is that I transfer those markings to the ever busy original pattern. So in this case I've gone and I've used a dark purple sharpie and that is this line here. I know I'm running out of sharpies. I am not sure what I'm gonna have to do at some point but this one really curves significantly away from the pattern and I think normally I don't necessarily mark the curve on here because it's just kind of harder. So I did go through and I put some markings like 1.75, 2.5, 1, 1.5, 1 1.75, etc. that are all going out that way. They're a little harder to do and then it pretty much matched up with the neckline here other than right there which was where I rounded it out and then I've got that line also coming here in the arm's eye so yeah that's a, a very busy pattern going on here now but it has kind of all of the bodices that I've made out of it that I've remembered to mark because the first few I didn't necessarily remember to do markings so now I can start cutting out the peppermint stripes but that's going to be tomorrow because it's bedtime even Dora has gone to bed. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm back at it today, and today we are cutting out the actual fabrics. So right now I'm starting with the back just because it is such like a iconic chevron is what I'm going for, I guess. So I've laid the interlining piece down on top of the stripey fabric with the stripes wrong side up and the interlining has the like inside up so that it's basically the layers as it's going to go together. So once I cut this, I can just surge along the edges and it's exactly as it will go together. So trying to maximize the <laughs> I don't know, use of the fabric, I guess, is really challenging when you have a piece that is so biased like this, because of course it needs to have its mirrored piece too, which winds up being over here. Now this is some of the fabric that I still had remaining. This isn't like the extra two yards that I bought, but I was trying to get these pieces on here because then I can use the new fabric for the fronts because those are also on the bias, so they're also going to take a lot of room. So that's what I'm doing over here. I I have already pinned one of these side backs to a small piece that like can just fit a side back and that's it. And then I hope to get at least probably one side back and one side front in this area here because those are all, I'm doing those straight up and down basically. And then I'm doing the fronts and the backs on the bias. So trying with this narrower piece of fabric here to get these laid out and still get a really nice chevron effect is really challenging because this fabric obviously gets narrower here because I think this was where I cut waistbands out. So I wanted to do this as a steeper chevron at first, but if I wanted this on this piece because it has to get down here, otherwise it's not wide enough, then I needed to tilt them a little bit less. So that's what I'm doing. I have this one pinned currently. I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to lay this on top of this so that I can make sure that the stripes are mirrored and then I can pin this one and cut this one out. So it is quite a process and I'm gonna have to do that for these and for the fronts just to make sure that they are mirrored. Luckily the sides will be a little bit easier just because they're not on the bias, but they still need to be a mirror of each other. So once I have this one done, I will need to cut this out and lay it on the opposing piece to get a mirror of that one, for example. So lots of work ahead of me and I'm going to get to it. Okay, so this is the second step of this now. I have cut out the first piece, which is all flatlined, and then I've laid the other piece down, which you kind of saw before, the opposing piece of interlining down. And now I'm laying this pinned piece on top of that, matching it up and matching up the stripes so that they are opposite once it's folded out. Hopefully I'm doing this right, because otherwise I'm wasting a whole lot of fabric. But because these two sides here are mirrored opposites of each other, they should fold out to create that chevron once I do up that seam. So, okay, hopefully I got this. Well, I think it looks correct, so hopefully it still looks that way when I sew it together. So naturally I'm now being really ridiculous because I held up a piece that was straight up and down kind of like against the stripes of the chevron and it looks terrible. It just looks like, no, why would I do that? And then of course I tilted it and I held it up like this and it's like, well, even if this doesn't match up because I am not that crazy, I can't, I just, I don't have the patience to figure out if it's going to match up or not. Like I no, that's too much for a princess seam. I just can't. But even if it doesn't match up, the zigzag is so much more appealing going that direction that I think I'm going to cut this piece on the bias and then who knows about the side piece and then no, uh, it's a whole big thing. But yeah, I'm cutting this one on the bias now. All right, so I have now cut out all of the bodice pieces with the stripes, other than that center front-ish part that gets all ruched or pleated or whatever. All of the rest of them that get flatlined have been cut out and pinned to their flatlining. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to surge around all of the edges here. I'm not gonna finish this edge, or at least that's my plan, because I think I might wind up cutting it back some and otherwise it's just going to be basted in place anyway. I don't know how well the ruching or pleating is going to cover this bold of a stripe so that's why I'm thinking that there may not be able to be much overlap at all and I may have to cut some back but I might baste it by hand or by machine just so that it's like 
down and in place it and I can get the pins out. But yeah, everything else is going to be surged and then I'm going to assemble the bodice and then I'm going to figure out what I want for that center ruched pleated part because then I can kind of like try it on and drape it on myself and see how that goes. But the darts and stuff will already be in place. So I have some work ahead of me, but I'm excited and I hope that I mirrored everything correctly. All right, I have my bodice pieces assembled. And you guys, oh my gosh, like, look at how fun this is. Okay, I can't turn this dress form. This is Antoinette. So I will have to walk around it. Ah, look at that back. Look at the back. I'm so excited about the back. I know, it totally doesn't fit Antoinette at all. But, oh my god, this is so pretty. And this, like, I, it doesn't match up. I knew it wouldn't. And, I mean, they're different directions. So, like, up here it's obviously a totally different line placement than, like, over here. But I still am really, really liking it. And then, like, over here it's got those great chevrons, even though they're not exact. And over here it's got more chevrons, some of which are pretty much exact. And it's just like, oh, the whole thing is so cool. So now I have to figure out how to go about doing the center bit to cover all that. I realized that I couldn't do up the shoulder seams without this bit in there where the pleated E type trim goes, or not trim, but the pleated-ish front piece goes. So I do have to figure that out next and also the sort of like faux ascot E bit. And of course that's going to be really challenging to do on two dress forms, both of which do not fit this bodice. So, hmm, that's great. I might have to put it on. I'd really rather not because I want to play with the drapes and like obviously that's a lot easier on something else, not on yourself, but it doesn't fit. So maybe it's not easy. Anyway, I'm going to be doing some experimenting and I will show you some of that, how that looks as I do it. All right, so the bodice is now on. It is fitting pretty darn perfectly and everything looks really good. It makes me wish that I just kind of had like a white plastron, if that's what they're called, I think, like the button panel or whatever in the center, because that would be so much easier than trying to figure out this whole pleaty bit. But now that it's on, I get to figure out said pleaty bit. So I'm going to take some maybe just like fabric scraps I'm hoping like this one is kind of a piece and try and hold it up and like pin it in place on myself and whatever and just see how it goes. I think I want it to be more like pleated than gathered but I don't know maybe it's actually gathering that I should do at the top and at the bottom and then pull it up and see if it wants to be into pleats. So I'm going to try multiple methods and just see what sticks. So first I went ahead and I pleated up this side, the horizontal side, like is in the fashion plate. And I was just taking that scrap of fabric and then like playing with pleats and pinning in a whole ton of places. Hopefully I haven't pinned through to my chemise and stuff, but oh, I'm sure I have. So anyway, I did that and then I was like, oh, do I like that? I'm not sure. Does it go with the diagonal stripes? I'm not sure. Let's give a vertical stripe one a chance. So I just kind of like, this isn't even, I think there's one pin in this. So, and I just kind of like folded it up and then realized, uh, I think I like the horizontal better because this just kind of gets messy. Like it just gets a lot of red and you can't really tell what the stripes are doing. You can't tell what the pleats are doing. Like it's just a lot. I like the direction better because it feels very streamlined, but I think the reason this is mostly not feeling streamlined is just because this whole like shawl thing going on over here which obviously won't be part of it this will be cut like here so it'll just be a narrow bit of the horizontal stuff leading into like an even narrower bit here and I think that that will be quite flattering hopefully so yeah um I think this is the winner because it's this one also just it doesn't want to pleat going in this direction of the fabric it doesn't want to like gather nicely it's just kind of stiff so yeah, I don't think this is the answer, even though it does look a little more streamlined. I think this is the answer. So, oh yeah, look, I did pin it. How about that? Blah, apparently I pinned it in two places. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so with this side, 
what I am going to attempt to do, depending on how many times I have pinned this through to my undergarments, what I'm going to attempt to do is first I'm going to, while I'm still wearing it, draw the line so that it's like going a little bit past where it needs to to do that overlap enough that I can turn it under and hem it and like have it, you know, a clean finish there. So then I'm going to hopefully look at where that is with the lines and un pleat, unpin, etc. Lay this on more fabric and cut out the mirror opposite so that I can then pin it all back up. I guess I should probably put a lot of marks of lines in there and like figure out where they go, but pin it all back up on both sides and stitch it into place. Um, I can't stitch the center neckline bit here until I figure out exactly what I'm doing with the like ascot part. So I have this fabric, which I think is what I'm using for the ascot. I don't remember what this is left over from, but clearly it's something. It might be a chemise set. Is this is my Regency chemise set. Could be that. So there should be enough in here to make an ascot, but I need some sort of a base piece. So probably what I'm going to do is probably a piece of twill, maybe a piece of muslin that is somehow going to like go under one of these sides and be stitched down and then go across the neckline bit so that it's wide enough to go under the one on the other side. But on that one, it would hook into place. And then this will have hooks and bars on a facing centered. And so I'll do up this closure and then flap that over and do up that closure. So it'll be a ton and a half hooks and eyes, but that's what they liked to do. And I think that will give me the base that I need to for this stuff and like obscure the fact that there is an opening. Because since this is sheer, if I just like put it over the top, you can very clearly see that opening down there. So that's why it needs like the twill layer or whatever. <sighs> so it's a lot of engineering. And it means that I'm going to have to put this corset back on tomorrow with everything too, because I know I'm not going to get to all of this point tonight because, you know, it's probably 1119. Yeah, not going to happen. But I should be able, I think, to cut out the other one of these tonight and maybe pin that in place. That's my hope. <sighs> this is the hard part because this is the part where I can't just like cut a pattern and sew it together and it's all drapey and blah. yeah this is where it's challenging for me so it gets a little stressful but we're getting close and once this is all in place and set and stuff then I can do the facings yeah I think I have to I have to wait for these stripes to be in place for the facings but I can do the facings before the ascot part so once I do that, I can do facings and I can do the center hooks and eyes. That will make things slightly easier. So it might not actually be tomorrow that I get to the ascot part. And if I don't get to it tomorrow, then that means it will be in next week's vlog along with sleeves and trimming and collars and all that. So I'm hoping that by the end of this week's vlog, as it is Friday night, I will have these in place and you'll get to see kind of like the full body of the bodice. So wish me luck. Um, yeah, so this is like a really weird shape. <laughs> this is the shape that I came up with. I think there is some shaping up here that I did not do because I think this folds in and I forgot to mark that part. So I marked everywhere else and I cut a little bit past the markings for the most part. I kind of forgot to do that when I first started. So I really, really hope that I cut that low enough because I cut it right at the marking <laughs> instead of past the marking. And then here, this part was weird because there was like a pleat that was on that. So trying to figure out what was happening with the pleat here, but like no pleat here, that was funky. So I think this is gonna get trimmed down when I actually put it on and it'll be a little smoother and this piece will look slightly less weird than it does, but not by much. And then this part folds in. This is why I think that this part up here folded in a little bit more too, because this part, I think you can see this faint pink line, but it folds in deeper as it goes up. So it's not quite right, but I didn't want to cut off that excess. So I am going to just cut the other piece like that, even though I think it's kind of more like that. And then this is where it actually reaches the edge of the piece. This is the neckline part that's going to get filled in. And this is where the pieces come together and where the facing will be attached 
on there. So that is still very funky shaped, but maybe slightly less funky. I don't know. Probably while this is all out like this, and while this is, you know, relatively accessible, I should probably actually cut the facings from here. That would probably be really smart. But I always have kind of a mental block when it comes to facings, because like right now they're meeting exactly center. But I know that one of these, the facing has to go out and then fold under. And then the other one, it just like folds under. And for some reason, I have a mental block about that sort of thing when it comes to putting that facing on something that is shaped. Like the one that just goes out farther, what does that look like for the facing? That's what I don't get. So I have to figure that out because I literally have to refigure that on every single project whether it's buttons or hooks and eyes or what. And it's frustrating. I wish that wasn't the case. The wait, maybe that's not the case. I guess it's the bottom one that goes out is what it is. This one just folds over or whatever one I use at the top just folds over and then the bottom one has to stick out farther. So at least it's not like obvious, but it's just annoying. And I never know whether I should just like cut one of the bodices longer, but obviously I didn't do that for this. I cut them so they were both in the center. Ugh. This is why I like being self-taught is not necessarily good. So I decided that one way that I could get around the whole like lapped facing type thing is I could attempt to use eyes on this closure instead of bars. Normally I use hooks and bars instead of hooks and eyes, but I could use the hooks and eyes because most of this is going to be covered over anyway. And I think for the part where it's not, I could like scoot them enough that there won't be a gap because that's usually why I don't use eyes is I ner get nervous about the gap. So this is the facing. I have cut them out based on this shape on the bodice. And there are two of them here. Now, one thing about like when I cut out the bodice is I was cutting it out of twill scraps that I have in my lovely now organized place. And the thing is that one of the sides, this side is a much thicker twill than the other side, which you can see is like really light and drapey because this is what Joann's makes now. And this is what they made a couple years ago which is unfortunate because this one's so much nicer. So I did the opposite here and I've cut out one of each of those of the facings and I'm going to put the lightweight one on the heavier weight of the bodice and the heavier weight one on the lighter weight of the bodice. Hopefully that will like make it a little bit more equal feeling, I guess. So I am going to put the stripey pieces that I cut out, I have cut out both of them now, I'm going to line them up on the bottom part of the bodice where they do meet along the edge. And then I think I'm just going to put the facings on from there. Because if I can start doing closures, then I feel like it will actually be easier to even do this and figure out like the neckline bit where it folds under and stuff. I started to fold it, but... Yeah, I feel like that would be easier. I don't know. I could be crazy. This could be all be wrong, but that's going to be what I'm attempting. So my facings are now stitched on this side and pinned on this side in place. But because I now have no seam allowance down the center front, I don't have a way to like pin this closed or anything. So I don't think that there's really any way that I can work on the pleating of these parts here until I get closures on here. Once I have hooks and eyes running all the way down here, I can just hook it closed and be all set and like drape all that up. So that means that I've been wearing my corset for nothing for the last like half hour or so because great. And it really means that the next step that I have to do is um, for one thing, stitch this inside bit down so that I'm not being stabbed with pins because that's what was just happening. And then for two, add all of those hooks and eyes all down the closure. So since that is all hand sewing and that's going to take me a while, I will see you tomorrow. All right, so I have the bodice on. It is all done up with the hooks and eyes. I've put all of those in. I believe I put 14 of them in and there are 16 total. I didn't do the ones right at the neckline or right at the very bottom because those get in the way once I try to do like the collar and the binding on the hem and stuff. So I will put those guys in later, but the rest of them are done. It's fitting super nicely. I'm really happy with how it's butting up together. So I'm glad that I went with the like hooks and eyes route as opposed to trying to do the overlapping hooks and bars like this just 
it works well. So, <laughs> and it also worked well for the pattern match down here. So I'm happy with how that looks. Now I have to figure out how to get these back into that like ruched ish position all here. So it's probably just going to be a lot of me standing in front of the mirror and like pleading to get them in place and folding and stuff. What I probably should have done already before putting this on was to press this side. <laughs> Actually, I suppose I still could because I have a little uh, sleep board here. And if I stack the sleeve board on top of my regular cutting table, this is still like a high enough surface that I could still press them. So I think I'm going to start by doing that, which I know is weird, but I'm going to press those sides in because that way I have no raw edges and then I can start pleating everything up. So I better get to it. I will show you at some point during this process what it's looking like. All right, so side one is pleated up. It was good that I had some of those markings still in there because like right at the waist where I had kind of the pink highlight, I was able to kind of follow that as I was doing the pleats, but most of it was really just draped on myself and then pinned in place. And it's gonna be a big question mark about how to actually stitch them in place. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it but they are at least now all pinned in place. For the most part, for the edge, after I did the fold in, which I just did like, I basically folded it where I had the pink markings, which I think was for the most part about half inch or five eighths inch to the edge, I folded that under. And then from about the hem to about here, I think, I was pretty much just following the white basting line that I did on the under layer and just going a tiny bit outside of that so that it'd be totally covered and then pinning there. Here though, I did stray from that because I actually went significantly wider than where I'd base it. And I think the basting goes to like about, I don't know, here-ish or something. And then this goes to here. And I know that this is probably hard to see all of the pleats on <laughs> because they do kind of like fold into a stripe. So I hope that they actually like show up and are good and all of that, but Again, I'm also not sure how to actually sew them into place, but I am going to do a relatively stupid thing because I know that I shouldn't do this, but it's like the only way to get it right. And I'm going to press them while I'm wearing it. I'm not using steam or anything. Don't worry, I won't burn myself. I'm wearing my corset, like I got layers there. Up here, I'm gonna have to be obviously significantly more careful and probably not press it on myself just because I have like, the under layer of the bodice and then right here I have the chemise but here I don't have any other layers of protection but over here I do have lots of layers and I can just press it. my irons on a fairly low setting right now it's on like a wool setting and um, so I can just press it making sure that I don't use steam and get most of this at least pressed in place on my body which will be really good. And then the hard part is going to be doing the same thing with this side and getting it to actually match the first side, or at least absolutely as close as possible match. And I know this is going to be a challenge. It will probably take me a while. So I am going to get started on it. sure they look really even from side to side. There were a few places that I actually took my measuring tape and I measured to make sure that this side matched this side. And so it's all pinned into place. I've already pressed this side down as well. So everything is now <laughs> pinned and pressed and I'd figure out how to actually attach it. Now I think that for this edge here where it's like layered over the other one, I think I'm going to use a prick stitch because I feel like it's going to be the least obvious and I can hopefully still make it so it sort of looks like it is a pleat fold going out this way because that's my goal. I may do that on all of them. The tricky thing about prick stitching with a striped fabric like this where it's so different is that if I do it all in white, if I'm on the red, it's going to show. And if I do it all in red, if I'm on the white, it's going to show. So I actually might just do really, really long stitch prick stitch and only do it, for example, on the white, only if stitches on the white. 
So I might do that for everything. It's a possibility. I'm not going to stitch this opening in yet because this is where that ascot panel is going to have to go. So I still do have to figure that out. That's going to wind up being in next week's vlog because it is Saturday night. But I'm super happy that I got all of this part all done in this week because I knew that this was going to be a real challenge. And I think I know where I'm going with the ascot at this point. I, I, as I mentioned before, I think it's going to be built on a panel that is this shape and that panel is going to be stitched in on one side and it's going to come over and hook underneath this on the other. So again, I can't stitch either of these down yet, but once I get that panel in, then this side will be stitched and this side will just kind of have a gap and I will be able to lift it up, hook it under and then flap that panel back down and it will look like I've got this ascot bit and the ascot will be probably attached to the collar. I haven't thought that part out yet because the collar is supposed to have a little divot right here. So um, I will still have to think on that before next week's vlog commences. But yes, I am very, very happy with this. One other option if I don't want to prick stitch everything is that a lot of these, if you've watched my like extant bodice videos, you can tell that a lot of these when they have pleats right here, they're not actually stitched at all because now what I have with my antiques is like they'll be attached here and they'll be attached here and the pleats will just be because over the years they've gone away. And I don't really want to do that. I'd rather have them stitched in. So that's why I'm thinking prick stitches are going to be best option here. The other big question mark here is how often did I pin through the bodice into my corset or my chemise? So um, last time it was only once, but I have a lot more pins in here now. So wish me luck that that will be it. But I do just want to show you a nice full turn as I go around. So you can see the gorgeous, all of the like zigzaggy everything. I'm super, super in love with how everything works. And again, that is where we are going to end this vlog for this week. I will be doing this stitching and show you what that looks like next week. So if you did like this video, please be sure to click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, including the finishing of this bodice, please be sure to click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this on Tuesdays and other sewing content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support me and all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi account down below in the description. Once again, thank you so, so much for joining me this week. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!